Some of the things that the performer really needs to practice and especially watch out for in this work is playing legato even if you have very thick textures and one is just moving from one chord to the next and one cannot afford to just play nothing but a melody with one of the hands. And one also needs to really work on these harmonic shadings. How do we manage to communicate these interesting modulations and bring out all the inner richness of the polyphonic writing here without losing the long line. How can we voice this note a bit more prominently or bring out this voice or take a bit of time with this chord without stalling and without breaking up the necessary forward motion that, that is required to, to keep the piece organic, to maintain the sense of, of unity. Okay, so let's look at this opening now. It is really important to be able to maintain the integrity of the upper voice and make that really distinct above the rest of the texture. Don't let don't let all of that take over the texture. So what you really need to do is, if you are uh, playing several layers in one hand, practice them by still playing them in the same hand, but breaking them up rhythmically so your fingers can get used to the, the variation of pressure. Something like this. I actually take the upper G sharp of the left hand texture in the right hand so I can do some finger pedaling, but more on this later. I might do something like that, so I can really practice getting that top voice really prominent without having to force the, the rest of my hand to also be louder. So break up the chords when practicing, and you can even exaggerate the differences. Of course, you don't want to quite play it like that, but it will help you create the sense of having several layers even in a single hand. Now, you might also want to be careful with how you are holding certain notes down and what you are keeping within a single pedal. For example, in something like this, if you're just going to pedal at the beginning of bar two and try to keep that low C sharp in the harmony, a lot of things are going to get smudged. I would actually recommend letting go of that C sharp and making the F sharp the the note that gets held in the harmony because I think this motion to the subdominant is actually quite nice. So, what I would recommend, once you get to the next chord, keep that F sharp held down from the opening chord of the bar and then change the pedal, clear the pedal so you still get that You get enough of that low C sharp, but then it kind of dissipates. You have to do some intelligent pedal work a bit later on in bars three and four as well, because you get this kind of situation. Obviously one needs to let go of the left hand chord quite soon to get to the next one at the beginning of bar four, but if one releases the right hand at the same time, Given that we need to change the pedal here, you'll get a hole in the right hand melody. So what you need to do is actually hold the right hand through this moment. But as soon as we change the pedal, we might end up smudging 
this a little bit, which is okay as long as you clear the pedal as soon as possible. If you can actually reach this left hand chord and hold all the notes down, that makes life a little bit easier because you can actually change the pedal in the middle and actually hold on to this low G sharp, which is quite nice in that sonority. So one is essentially having two layers. The release of this note is gonna be quite a bit slower than the rest of the sonority that has been built. One last tip about clearing the pedal. You can either go with the eighth notes, something like that, or you can flutter pedal. And my suggestion for fluttering is to lift your heel off the ground. It is much easier to affect a quick kind of shaking motion rather than trying to do so with your heel on the ground. It can cause cramps. So lift your heel off the floor. And in that case, just much, 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 much easier to create this kind of fluttering that will really give you an even and smooth release of the sonority that has been built. One other thing, apart from, of course, the pedal and the voicing that is going to help you affect a nice, smooth legato, is, of course, the touch itself. You want to be careful not to ever create any kind of percussive sound. Even with the kind of same dynamic level, you want to make sure that you are really depressing the keys very carefully with a certain amount of weight right from the keyboard. even exaggerating the contrast between the melody and the rest of the voices when you're practicing, really ensuring that even if you cannot tie the notes actually physically together, you still get that legato sound with the help of the pedal. Given the way in which you are playing those notes, so pay close attention to the touch and the way in which the key is reaching the bottom, the way you are activating the mechanism to send the hammers to the strings. One more thing to say about the opening 16 bars is, of course, the phrasing that I spoke about a little earlier uh, when I uh, discussed the phrase structure. You want to make sure that the four bar phrases have a certain kind of motion and direction that aren't quite necessary with the two bar ones. You can of course take more time here. But when you come to the four bar phrase, make sure. As you heard, one can of course bring out different voices or different moments and of course hesitate a little with interesting harmonies, but make sure that you don't lose the long line and all of these things still fit in with that sense of direction. All that means is that you might take a little bit less time or you might want to adjust it so that it's not very sudden and that you have actually quite smooth ritardandi or accelerandi, nothing happens that might jar and, and um, arrest that motion. And I think that might even be highlighted later on. There's a kind of sense of direction here. And then, no matter how much you might wait here, don't lose the intensity of the voice, voicing and the intensity of the upper line especially. That will help you maintain that tension through the rest of the phrase, even if you are taking time.
So now at bar 17, we arrive at the first pianissimo in the piece. However, we must be careful not to use up all our stores or quota of magic sudden quiet moments because two bars later we actually have a triple piano, a pianissimo. So we need to make sure that that pianissimo is actually relatively substantial for a pianissimo so that that drop to the really quietest dynamic level two bars later is even more magical. So maybe let the at least the top voice have a certain amount of um, uh, ringing clarity that then you might want to mute in bar 19. And I think it is absolutely okay to use the left pedal, especially in bar 19. Maybe don't use it in bar 17. Play, play bar 17 with a, with a certain amount of um, substance and then really disappear in, in, in bar 19. And one way to practice this extreme, extreme quiet playing is first get used to actually playing those passages without actually producing any sound, playing it so slowly, playing the notes so slowly that only a couple of notes actually speak. Or if you want to be really extreme about it, that none of them speak. Something like that. You'll really get used to this very, very controlled playing of each key and then you apply a little more pressure each time until you get to that point where one is really flirting with that with that breaking point after which sound is not produced, one is really at the edge of that, you know, hyper pianissimo. And that's how you can really start to achieve this really, really, really quiet sonority, which one has to, of course, use with caution, but in such moments, I think is, is, is really important. And also, if you're playing in a large space, don't worry too much about playing too quietly in such moments. If one can draw the audience in, one can actually project this, this intense energy even in the quietest of passages and everyone will become really hushed and, and pay all their attention to you. So I think it's, it's really a good idea to practice getting that kind of touch where one can really achieve this incredibly quiet sonority. Now, I think in this section, one can use the asymmetrical phrase structure, uh, which I mentioned earlier, these, this, this special five bar phrase to really affect this uh, great buildup of tension. So we have this mm -hmm. from bar 21. As you notice, I do a bit of hand redistribution again to make things a little bit more comfortable in terms of uh, maintaining the legato. Because doing this isn't exactly that comfortable. So even though a crescendo might not be explicitly marked, I think that the repetition of this this insistence and, the, and all of a sudden the twist in the harmony to take us back to the minor with this remarkable crunching dissonance requires a lot more intensity. So I think we can use the, this unusual phrase structure to our advantage and really emphasize this kind of strained, labored element here in our attempt to get back to the opening material in order to really set up the recapitulation and make it as potent dramatically as possible. Mm -hmm. 